On today's Visual Studio Toolbox, Volcon and Fukan are going to show us a great tool for building line of business web applications. Hi, welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Robert Green, and today we're going to talk about building web applications with the Serenity platform. And to do that, joining me are Volkan Jalan and Fukan Evron. Hi, guys. How are you? Hi. Thank you. Robert. Thanks, thanks nice for coming here. on the show. Give us a, a brief introduction to who you are and where you're at, and then we'll talk about Serenity. Okay. I'm Volkan Jaylan. I am the original author of, of Serenity Framework. Um, I'm working on Serenity like 15 years. We are a small software house in Istanbul. That's all. Great. Fukan? I, uh, I'm also living in Istanbul and yeah. Also working on Serenity. <laughs> yeah, on Serenity since like months okay so what is the serenity platform and what problems were you trying to solve when you created it serenity platform is a framework for data centric business applications in the past uh, we were working with some cms uh, with many listing screens forms search and reports and so on and we noticed that we were spending uh, more than maybe 90 percent of our time on maintaining creating and maintaining such screens mm -hmm. so this gave us the idea of creating serenity framework to solve these issues and you when was it originally created and what version are you on uh, now it started around 2007 okay but uh, it became an open source framework in 2013 Okay, Indeed. and is it, it's aimed at ASP.NET and ASP.NET Core in particular? Uh, it started as an ASP.NET web forms mm -hmm. platform, and we switched to ASP.NET MVC, and now we are using ASP.NET Core. Excellent. All right, so I'd love to see it. Show it to me. Okay. Uh, I'll start with some introduction to Serenity. A short interaction, then Fukan will do a demonstration. Great. Okay, this is the information that we already shared. And Serenity, as we said, is the right tool for data centric line of business applications with many forms, pages, and reports. And some of some samples for them are CRM, CMS, ERP, and so on. And then the straight stream interface of public facing web sites. We are not a front-end framework. You can use any front-end framework like React, Vue, Angular you like for the front-end part of your site. It aims rapid development. Uh, it handles common tasks you deal with while coding business applications and lets you spare your precious time focusing on features that are specific to application that domain. So it handles validation permissions, forms and layout and similar things. And so we get feedback from our users that it reduces development time from months to weeks, even days. Great. So it handles a lot of the plumbing and the usual stuff that's in every single application, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. And it has a code generator and it's the rapid development starts there. This code generator analyzes your tables to extract information like data tables, nullability for in case and so on. And it generates some files like the entity, create the drive update, the late list handlers, request handlers, uh, and other classes like the alloc and grid. And these generated files are not boilerplate code and it contains minimum amount of code based on some Serenity classes. And Serenity uses declarative prediction. Uh, entity class, everything starts with the entity class, which is which will be generated by the Sargam. Then we use attributes, annotations, behaviors, and reflection. So it allows us to reuse this information and cascade it from the entity to grid columns, form, services, and so on. So, but we still provide the necessary hooks where required. So we don't hit the so-called declarative wall, like mm -hmm. if there's some function that we didn't think about, 
we still give you some methods that you can override and add your at the functionality unit. And also, Serenity uh, allows you to catch errors early because it trans translates some some types like entities, enumerations, editor types, and so on on the build from TypeScript to C sharp and C sharp to TypeScript. Mm -hmm. So you get IntelliSense support and compile time checking on development and build time, not the runtime. This was one of the issues that we were having on in the past, with especially with the JavaScript code because of no compile time checking, type checking. And Serenity, as I mentioned before, went through many changes because the technologies for software development moves fast. And we never said our users to re rewrite their applications. We gave them a clear upgrade path where possible or backward compatibility as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Uh, Seren is our starter application template which we are talking about today. It has about 600k installs and more than 100 five-star reviews. Impressive. Yeah, that's all. And I'll now leave the floor to Fukan for a demonstration. Great. Yep. Hello. Uh, now I'm sharing my screen. I'll be creating a Carver Solar app using Serene template for this project. I already downloaded and installed Serene extension. Mm -hmm. If you also that, you can just search Serene on the projects window. I will name my project Serene Cars. Now, Serene extension wizard is going to ask me if I want these features. I can just deselect them, but I will just leave them selected as they give more essentially more samples to look at more examples. Now Serenity is creating my project and it's installing NuGet packages, NPM packages, and it is also building the project. Let's wait a bit until it builds. While it builds, it's also translate the codes as Volkan said. It is translating D sharp code to TypeScript and TypeScript to D sharp. Let's run our application and take your first look. When we run our application, it's going to create a local database with project name and our default DB that is inside migrations. We also use Fluent Migrator for migrations, but we will take a look at it. When you first create your application, of course, you can see a login screen. I mean, that's expected. And you can log in with credentials, admin, and serenity. After you log in, you're going to see a dashboard on the right. You can customize it very easily. And on the left part, we see a uh, navigation. And here we have the features that we selected on the feature selection part. We also have administration part where you can manage your languages, translation, roles, and users. Mm -hmm. Now, when we create a Serenity application, we usually start with migration migrations for tables and i already did write it earlier as not to lose some time but let me just copy migration code and i think i'll leave it as it just creates a schema named car then creates two tables in it and makes table has a make id and its identity it has a name and logo and cars table has a car ID, of course, that entity again is going to write it. And we have make ID, which is a foreign king pointing to makes table. We have all sorts of different details over here and two photo fields again. Now, after our replications ran, it created the tables. Now we can create, oh, we can open a terminal page on that web 
part and let the second do its job. So cars and mates, is that the basic sample data? Where did that come from? We are going to create these tables as a sample. This is a migration okay. we are writing with Fluent Migrator. It will, when we run the application, these tables will be created in our database. Okay. And then we will generate code for them using Sargan. Yeah. Okay. That table got created in this local DB. Now, Sargan so automatically creates a database for your application in local DB, but you can of course, move it to an, another database. Mm -hmm. Now, we are code generator. And people select the bolt. And people select the cars and makes. The module name, as you can see on the right, we have a modules folder. This is for separating our code. And for the print sample application, excellent application, I'm gonna write, I'm gonna put them in under vehicles folder. For class identifier, I will use singular name, car, I will leave function as is. For main I will also use the same vehicles one. one. And I will create a row, car entity, a repository and its service centers. A user interface using TypeScript. It also gets created in C-sharp code and custom field. So I can also can create custom code. It is extendable, but as we don't have any right now, it's not going to do anything. But let's keep it something like this. Now we got a vehicles folder with car and make. Mm -hmm. There's enters. Let's run our application again and see how it looks after we just generate our code. Wait, let's log in. And on the navigation board, you can see a new vehicle selection. On there, you can see a make. But right now, this logo is a string field, but we want to upload a file over there. And we don't want to see this logo on the grid. And on the cars, that is the same thing. Everything is a string field or an integer field. And we don't want to see these photos over here too. So we're going to change that really easily. Let's go back to code. And first, let's go to make a row. This is our main entity, by the way. We can just go to property of logo and write image upload editor. And the column says, where grids get populated. If there's a property on the row that's here, it's gonna automatically create a column for that thing. Let's run our application and take a look at this logo field and the logo field on the grid that we deleted. And I'll get our application. Like, as you can see, the logo part is gone, mm -hmm. we can create a file and it automatically handles temporary file upload and deleting that temporary file and moving that image to, a, to its supposed place with their ID and random file name. Okay. That is easy. And now let's do some heavy lifting on the car, on the car dialog. Actually, let's make this a dialog. So it is, it takes the whole page. We can go to our dialog and we can say identity of readers that If you run our application, this is going to be a panel, but let's fix all the fields. First of all, I don't want these photos on my grid, so I just deleted them on the columns and on the row we saw that make id was a normal field but we want to select from our makes so we can easily say hey this is a lookup editor that selects 
the framework will automatically generate a select with ID property as its value and name property as its display value. Mm -hmm. And I want to like, have auto completion on the model. So I will use distinct values that are, it's gonna show me what has been entered to this field before. I want to have auto completion true. And of course I want to make users into this field. So I will have to place that through. I actually wanna have users create their makes as they go. So I will put that in place at to this service the competitor too. For years, I will use a filter editor and I will make it look like the latest years are at the top, so it is in descending order. In max year, current year. So we can just break this. You know, here I I wanna see latest 30 years. So I will just do I'll just turn the over here. Hmm. Yeah, for fuel types and transmission types, we're gonna use two enums. I mean that write them they're pretty basic, so let me just copy it here. A fuel type is an enum with petrol, diesel, hybrid, and trick. And transmission type is just manual, automatic, and hybrid. So right now we're gonna do we're gonna select these few fields and we're gonna here, you know, so we're going to go to their field declarations and we're going to change these two to now built. Now, you know, will be used everywhere on the dialogue on the filters, which I'm going to show near the end. And for main photo, we already did this. We're going to put an image upload editor and for multiple photos on additional photos, we're going to use a multiple image yeah let's create it let's run our application now <clears throat> after sign in we're gonna go to the car page and yeah we can see to make that be created. Let's also like this and create a new one. Create EMW. Now we can select one of these. Right. Create BMW one. For model, we're gonna put 320i. For year, we're gonna put 350. Fuel type, petrol, transmission, hybrid. And usually you cannot start with negative values. If you want to, you can add an integrator with LO negatives true. And we're going to add a main photo for this car. Let's select this one. This one is nice. So the other one, add additional ones. And let's just save this. And now we can select all of the data is here. But I also want to see this like BMW 320i side by side. No, they're separated. So right now we can do, we can go back to the row and we can declare a new property. We're going to use explore, uh, SQL expression. That's their values. I'm going to name this display name. And put here. We're going to call that change. That is our make row that is get joined to this row by using JMA. And we're going to start with our name. And we're going to call that as space. And we're going to call that current rows. P0 means current row. Current rows. Model. And we can create our string build. Display name. Can you check the parameters? Yeah. Now, 
if you want to see this, you can go ahead to make column, uh, sorry, card columns and create a new column named display name. It's invisible. Check it out now. Upper builds is going to refresh. Let's just put start that. When we open our car page, we're going to see a display. Very nice. And yeah, let, now let's add some quick filters. And by quick, I mean quick for real. So I'm going to hate this. I uh, hide this make name as it's kind of useless now. We already have this data. But I still want to put filters on this. I want to filter it with make name. So we can just we, we can hide it and create it and put it right next to it. I can have quick filters in this two emails too. So I can just say over here and quick filter over here too. Oh, right on this. You're going to see raise three new filters on top of the grid that has all the data, all the filters that we have. Let's wait for the application. So, so we are having a little bit of difficulty with your audio from Khan, but we're seeing the demo, so that's good. Uh, let me get closer. Is it better now? I doubt yeah, that's what. Yeah, I think so. All right. Now we can filter it using these fields. Let's add a new one more car and check it out. And for this, we're going to create an RS. But I'm sorry, people who really like cars, but I don't think this is the correct model name. Please forgive me. Let's just do this. Field type. Let's make it hybrid. And hybrid again. That's the main photo. And let's select the other ones. And let's save it. And let's filter it. That's cool. All right. Wow. Yeah, the filters are literally quick. That's impressive. That's a, a lot of a lot of plumbing and code that just gets written for you. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And, and obviously if you have an existing database, you can hook up to that. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, of course. So we're just looking yeah. at sample databases that come with uh, Serenity, right? Yeah, right. of course. Mm -hmm. On our North Wind example, we don't we use migrations to create and populate database, but you don't have to like hook up any data, any migration system at all. You can just use your database and create your entity and other stuff at Serenity and just create an administrative interface like that. And so to start using this, people just go get the extension, which they can find on the Visual Studio Marketplace. They can search for it mm -hmm. inside Visual Studio. Mm -hmm. Right. And then everything you've just done, they can start doing, right? Yeah. That's and we also have a tutorial in Serenity. We also have a tutorial, mm -hmm. a movie data tutorial in Serenity.es. It is quite comprehensive for learning Serenity. They could also check that out. It is right here on the presentations, tutorials, movie database. Okay, great. Yeah. We also have a documentation website, uh, sorry, a demo website right here, which they mm -hmm. can log in using Admin and Serenity again. This is using our Star Chart team. It is a premium team with more samples like drag and drop grouping, product, Excel, import, a wizard, and more polished team with dark team support. Okay. There is also 
source code over here, they can quite easily check that out too. Right. So now back on the the first page you were on, it said demo and then it said buy. So talk briefly about that. There's a free version and a more advanced version. Yeah. So what's the difference between the two of those? Um, they are basically the same. They are both based on Serenity. Uh, mm -hmm. Starshop just has some additional features like exact style filtering, regular grouping, a more polished bootstrap part based term. Um, but we still have many users who are still using the open source version. So you can certainly create applications with the open source version as well. Okay. It just gives you some extra features and additional premium support. Fantastic. This is a, this is really cool. This is very, very cool stuff. Um, I can see why it's popular. I can see why there've been a lot of downloads and a lot of great reviews. So this is certainly something that people can download. It looked pretty easy to use. That's awesome. And it looks like there's a lot of functionality in there. So this is awesome stuff. Thanks so much yeah. guys for coming on the show and showing it to us. Thank you and for hosting us. <laughs> we will have links to the, the sample website as well as where people can uh, get the extension in the show notes. And thanks again. Thanks so much for coming on guys. Thank, Thank you. you. And so I hope you guys Bye -bye. enjoyed that and we will see you next time on Visual Studio Toolbox.